emotional reaction from the coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs. He is one of many fighting back tears on this solemn day for Hockey Nation. 15 people are dead after a crash involving the Humboldt Broncos. At times like these, communities often come together. Today, members of this tight-knit community in eastern Saskatchewan are trying to make sense of the tragedy. This is CBC News special programming. I'm Arthi Pohl. Welcome to viewers joining us live on CBC Television. We have extensive coverage of the Humboldt crash coming up this hour. First, here's what we know about what happened so far. A bus carrying the Humboldt Broncos junior hockey team collided with a tractor trailer truck in Saskatchewan Friday night. There were 29 people on board the bus. 15 people are now dead. 14 people are injured, at least two critically. The driver of the truck was not physically hurt, and we understand he's now being given grief counselling. Now, this is where it happened. The bus was about 30 kilometres north of Tisdale, Saskatchewan, northeast of Saskatoon. The team was on its way from Humboldt to Nipawin for a Game 5 in a playoff series. Now let's turn to Rafi Bujikanyan, who's in Humboldt, Saskatchewan, with the latest. Rafi. Arthi, you may be hearing some background noise behind me, and that's because I believe what's going on is the arena here is being prepared to become a place of vigil tomorrow. A memorial vigil will take place here tomorrow evening. The RCMP are very much still in the preliminary stages of the investigation into this accident. It's still so raw, only investigators are allowed on site. We can tell you that, according to the police, the bus was headed north yesterday evening the truck that collided it was headed west. 29 people were on that bus. In the immediate hours that followed, 14 of them were declared dead, and that number has now gone up to 15. Several people were taken to hospital where they remain, some in critical care, Arthi. And Rafi, we know that it is a tight-knit community. How are they dealing with this tragedy? I've been here since this morning and there is this makeshift memorial just outside the arena. People just showing up and dropping off flowers and plush dolls and it's just been getting bigger and bigger in the hours that I've been here. People are not taking this easily, Arthi. A lot of people knew these hockey players. A lot of parents may not have lost their own children, but maybe they lost people that they would host from time to time when they would show up for community events. Now, at times like this, we hear from community leaders often and we expect them to remain calm and sort of represent the people who are in mourning. I'm going to let you listen to a couple of them and you can tell that this has been a challenge even for them. This tragedy has hit um, a number of people, not just us, but I think everybody can relate to uh, to this experience, um, you know, throughout Canada, we we see teams <clears throat> going out into the into the Canadian winters um, on buses all the time, and I and you know it's always a, a thought in parents and fans' minds. I don't have a lot to say, um, other than. other than the worst nightmare has happened. As you can see, people are having a tough time just talking about this. Now, this arena was supposed to hold a playoff game tomorrow evening, Arthi, but instead it's going to hold a community vigil for the dead. An incredibly difficult day out there. Thank you for this, Rafi. That is the CBC's Rafi Bujikanyan in Humboldt, Saskatchewan. Now, the RCMP Assistant Commissioner for Saskatchewan also spoke at that news conference. He gave us more details about what happened on Friday. The hockey community has strong roots in our province, and the sudden loss of so many lives will be felt not only in Saskatchewan, but across this country. 
It's difficult to put into words the sorrow that one feels in a situation like this. Yesterday at approximately 5 p.m., the Nipwin RCMP responded to a collision between the Humboldt Broncos bus and a tractor trailer unit. Initial investigation has determined the tractor trailer unit was traveling westbound on Highway 335 and the bus traveling northbound on Highway 35. There were 29 people on the bus at the time of the collision. The driver of the truck was not injured. He has been offered counseling. Now, the head coach of the Humboldt Broncos, Darcy Hogan, is among those who died. His sister, Debbie Carpenter, spoke to us from Red Deer, Alberta, earlier today. His loss is um, absolutely devastating. Um, he was the heart and soul um, for his family, um, his friends, um, and obviously for those uh for the teams and the communities that he served as as head coach um his compassion and his love for the sport of hockey but also for his players um is is unsurpassed um it was evident in everything that he did and um his 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 loss will be felt um as deeply as the collective, <laughs> as I tweeted out, our personal loss um, is has feels the same as the collective loss of all of the, all of the those that passed away. And that was Debbie Carpenter, sister of Humboldt Broncos head coach Darcy Hogan. Now the prime minister has also issued a statement which reads in part. This is every parent's worst nightmare. No one should ever have to see their child leave to play the sport they love and never come back. Our national hockey family is a close one, with roots in almost every town, small and big, across Canada. Humboldt is no exception. To the entire Humboldt community, we are here for you. As neighbours, as friends and as Canadians, we grieve alongside you. Now, the tragedy in Humboldt is touching people across the country, fans and players alike. Greg Ross is outside the Air Canada Centre in Toronto, where the Maple Leafs face the Montreal Canadiens tonight. He joins me now. So, Greg, what are you hearing? Well, Arthur, I can tell you, the moment I walked into this uh, building this morning, uh, it was clear that it was not going to be business as usual today. With this tragedy weighing heavy on the minds of players and coaches from both the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens, as well as staff that work here in the, in the building and media, uh, obviously, uh, this is a small, tight-knit hockey world uh, in this country, uh, and uh, this tragedy is something that uh, shocked the hockey world. And being in the Leaf dressing room uh, this morning, a very somber place as uh, players were asked questions about this, uh, their thoughts on uh, this tragedy, obviously, and uh, reflecting on their days playing in junior hockey, traveling on those uh, very same buses, on those very same routes in some cases. Uh, many players on both teams played in the Western Hockey League. Uh, some players in fact uh, from Saskatchewan in fact uh, Toronto Maple Leafs head coach Mike Babcock uh, grew up in Saskatoon he played uh, for the Saskatoon Blades of the Western Hockey League so he knows all about traveling uh, by bus uh, from game to game to a playoff game like these uh, uh, like the Humboldt Broncos were doing and uh, you know, he talked, he reflected on this today. In fact, he came into his uh, press conference this morning uh, before taking any questions from members of the media. He gave an, a very emotional statement about what had happened. My buddy's kid played there. Yeah. I talked to him, he's farm in Saskatoon last night. And, and as the calls were coming in and they're talking about all the kids they've coached over the years that are playing on that team. Uh, I can't even imagine being the parent or the wife or the kids at home um, going through something like this. So uh, you can't make up for loss. You just can't. It's got to rip the heart of your chest. Uh, we pray for those families and thinking about them. You know, he was obviously uh, very emotional. He uh, made a statement that lasted several minutes and then it was quiet for a couple of seconds. He took a deep breath and he said, OK, let's just talk about hockey. He was ready to move on. But obviously, this is not something 
uh, as a country, we're ready to move on from. And as you can imagine, Arthi, uh, there's going to be moments of silence in hockey arenas across this country uh, tonight. This is Saturday night. It's a very busy hockey night with many games, particularly in the NHL tonight. And you know, Greg, you've also been talking to a lot of fans as they arrive for tonight's game. So how are they reacting? Well, you know, it's interesting. Just walking outside of the building here, you can find fans from all across the country. In fact, we ran into a father uh, and son who had made the trip here from Saskatchewan just to watch this uh, classic rivalry between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, but obviously, uh, living so close to this tragedy, uh, it was emotional for them to talk about. One of my uh, best friends, he's, he's played about 10 games with them this year, and he was supposed to be on the road with them traveling for the playoffs, but he never did, and I'm, I'm thankful he wasn't. It's something that you never want to hear about, and especially the hockey community. Like, everyone's so close, like, no matter from your, like, East Coast, West Coast, it doesn't matter. A horrible tragedy. Um, hockey kind of takes a back seat at this time. You think about those players and their, their families at home, and the family they had in that bus. Obviously, hockey is such an integral part of this country, so when a tragedy like this happens, it touches so many different people, but uh, as you can see, just by talking to some of these fans here, they all feel a special connection. If you've played hockey in a small town anywhere in Canada, you can definitely relate. Arthi? All right, thanks for this, Greg. That is the CBC's Greg Ross in Toronto. Now, last night's tragedy isn't the only crash in Canadian history involving sports teams. In 1956, five members of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and Winnipeg Blue Bombers died in a plane crash on the way back from an all-star game in Vancouver. A total of 62 people died in that crash. Almost 20 years later, a hockey team from Quebec was involved in a bus crash. 29 members of the Sherbrooke Casters were injured in the crash and one player died. Now this isn't the first time the Saskatchewan hockey community suffered a great loss. In 1986, four members of the Swift Current Broncos died in a bus crash. The team bus hit some black ice and rolled on its side. The Broncos played out the rest of the season, led by future NHLers Joe Sackick and Sheldon Kennedy. Ten years ago, the basketball world in New Brunswick was shaken by a tragic crash. The Bathurst Phantoms were in a van when their vehicle crashed just outside their hometown. Seven members of the high school team were killed and one teacher. And now, as I mentioned, one of the people affected in that 1986 bus crash was former NHL player Sheldon Kennedy. We spoke to him earlier, and he says he remembers that crash like it was yesterday. If you look at these kids, most kids were billeted out in the community of Humboldt. So they, you know, they basically had two families, and uh, they had their 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 birth family, and then they had their billet family. And I just remember the chaos and the fear. And I remember, you know, talking to my mom, and she's standing at the ticket wicket uh, in Regina, waiting for the team to get there to play the game. And uh, all they hear is that there's been an accident, and uh, there's four players dead. Is it my child? Is it not my child? Whose child is it? what do we do to help and I just remember the, the chaos uh, and the concern and I just listening to the mayor speak on your program uh, before I came on and you know I don't think you ever sign up for mayor to deal with these issues but I thought that uh, he did an unreal job I look at small towns I know small towns in Saskatchewan I know the people of Saskatchewan they're resilient and I think it is absolutely critical that uh, you know they all stick together and they get get through this and they support one another and that is uh, but I think when I first heard this uh, I just remember the day and I remember the day and the first two or three days uh, from this event happening and it was about trying to piece it together you know if you look at the players that are on the bus the surviving players on this bus uh, they're in all p hospitals all in different cities throughout the northern uh, province of Saskatchewan and they're wondering you know who who was alive who d who isn't alive what happened to this person and they're trying to trying to piece that together and that was former NHL player Sheldon Kennedy. He was a member of the Swift Current Broncos when that team's bus was involved in a fatal accident in 1986. Now in Edmonton, the head coach of the Oilers, Todd McClellan, had close perspective on that bus crash in 1986. That year, 
He was a 19-year-old playing an hour down the road with the Saskatchewan Blades, and a decade later, he found himself in swift current as the Broncos coach. Here were some of his thoughts today. And we talk about the hockey world, what about the real world? The other people that are out there, we're all in shock. Um, you know, there's really no other way to put it. And um, we're a little bit on the outside looking in and I can't imagine what those families are feeling and what they're going through right now. I was lucky enough to be part of a community that went through that in Swift Current, lived it and felt it. And it goes on forever. And that's Edmonton Oilers coach Todd McClellan earlier today. Now, we did get a chance to speak with Ron McLean, host of Hockey Night in Canada. He told us what his initial reaction was upon hearing the news of this bus crash. I just wanted to reach out and uh, hold the people in Humboldt, uh, try to support them uh, in silence, of course, if possible, to just sit and listen and, uh, and feel the pain and share the pain and... Uh, provide a little bit of uh, loving support. Uh, we all as Canadians uh, understand uh, you know, what it's like to have your child uh, looking out the window of a bus dreaming of the National Hockey League career or an Olympic hockey career in the case of the women and just so heartbroken. And uh, that, that was my thought and I really, you know, to see Sheldon speak to it, uh, I obviously go back to the 86 bus crash, uh, December 30th, 1986. Lisa Culp was a woman driving home from the interior of BC in the vehicle behind that bus and was the first person on the scene. And she held the hand of Trent Cressy, who died uh, in that crash. Didn't even know who he was. Got back in her car when all the police and ambulances arrived and moved on to Moose Jaw. 21 years later, she sought out the broadcaster from back in the day to find out more about the man whose hand she'd held. And I mean, it never leaves you. The, the, you, you will have the details are emerging very slowly, naturally, because honestly, uh, the thing about Arthur Bus, uh, the players put their wallets in bags under the seat or in the overhead bins. Uh, the boys had all dyed their hair for the playoffs, uh, beautiful golden hair. And so you can just imagine the, the chaos uh, for the poor first responders. Heart goes out to the families. Uh, heart goes out to the first responders. And, you know, a lot of what we're hearing, too, from, for example, members of the community, the president of the team who had a press conference earlier, just saying that we are a family. Mm -hmm. And you said that, you know, you came up through this sort of network of uh, small town hockey. What is it like? These people, they viewed themselves as brothers, as family members. Well, and, and you know, while the players are looking out the window dreaming of the NHL, I, as a young broadcaster in the 80s, was looking out the window thinking of making it to Hockey Night in Canada. I can remember looking at all the farms and the lights on the homes and thinking, I wonder if the folks in that house can hear our Red Deer Rustler broadcast on CKRD and I thought aren't the folks at Hockey Night in Canada lucky because their broadcast goes into every nook and cranny of the country and Tyler Bieber is the reporter with the Humboldt Broncos God love them I mean I remember uh, Arthur when we would drive home from the game I would always stand in the wheel well Cliff was the driver and I would stand in the wheel well by the front door and talk to the head coach Wynn Dempster I mean it was so precarious and poor Cliff was driving in those uh, awful conditions night after night uh, but we didn't think about it right uh, but I had that dream and the players have that dream and that's Ron McLean, host of Hockey Night in Canada, speaking to us earlier today. Now, there has been so much reaction to this heartbreaking news. Humboldt Broncos president and billet Kevin Geringer called the news devastating. And we asked him how he was holding up during this tragic time for his community. I'm fine. This is uh, really about, um, about our community, about our families and billet families and our kids. And so uh, that's where our energy needs to be focused, and certainly that's what we're doing. You know, you mentioned that your family was a billet family and that there were so many billet families for this team as well. Um, did you know one of the players who was on the bus? Did one of the players live at your home? What's the condition on that? Um, I really am not at a, in a position to disclose a whole bunch around that. Um, uh, we are, uh, we're all grieving deeply for the loss of all of our kids who are on that bus and our, and the adults and, and our media personnel and our statistician and our coaches. Um, we're grieving uh, for all those who have been injured and uh, are having to deal with the, the, uh, the trauma that they've experienced who, um, who, who continue to be with us. and. We're grateful for that, but of course we, um, we recognize that we're dealing with one of the most difficult tragedies that um, probably our, 
uh, as difficult a tragedy as our sporting world's ever heard of. So um, we're working to try and combat that and deal with it in the best possible way. And I remember you saying during the press conference that there's been an unprecedented and overwhelming mm -hmm. amount of support that has come through to the community, to yourself, to these families. And we understand that a lot of the families have now been notified. Is that correct? How are these families doing? Have you had a chance to speak with some of them? Our, our organization has reached out to them. Um, we, we, have, uh, we reached out to them initially to let them know that there was an accident that had occurred. Um, we didn't have any details and certainly it's not our position to share those details. But we also reached out to them after the fact and let them know that um, um, after everything had transpired, um, what can we do to help support them, um, to get them to our, our, uh, our community, um, if they were living uh, outside of our community, that sort of thing. I mean, we have multiple students or athletes, pardon me, who, who, um, who live in Alberta, those sorts of things. And so just connecting with them and making sure that they know that we're here, we can provide supports. I mean, organizations have reached out um, incredibly. Um, I, I don't even want to begin to name all of them because I'll miss a hundred of them. So um, we're just so grateful for the outpouring of support that we've that we've had as an organization that ultimately is needs to be directed toward um, our families, our billet families and our kids and, and our, uh, our, um, our staff and, our, and, and everyone who was on that bus and who is dealing with the aftermath of, of this horrific ordeal. And we've heard it from so many people who we've spoken to today in terms of how tight-knit these teams can be and these communities as well. You know, a, a community of 6,000 people, certainly all of these teammates felt as though they were brothers. How are they doing, the ones who you have spoken with? We, at this point, we have not, we, we haven't talked to the, to the athletes. Um, they have been... Um, the, any of the athletes and, and those who have um, survived this ordeal are being dealt with by medical professionals and that sort of thing. Um, that we're, we're dealing with their families in support of them and we will have an opportunity um, when, when it works for us to be able to reach out to our athletes as well. But of course, um, parents need to be with their kids and we need, we, we, we need to be able to do everything we can to get them to their children and, and to their, uh, you know, husbands and have been lost and uh, sons and so uh, and daughters have been injured and those kinds of things so that is our main focus and and we will um, we know that we've got supports in place to support the kids the families are are being uh, you know are, are, are there to, to help their kids that way we've got um, one of our assistant coaches who is um, on site uh, who was not on the bus uh, who's who's in Saskatoon and he's going between the hospitals and supporting the kids there as well. So, um, you know, we, that's how we're trying to manage it right now. And then we we're dealing with the, with the other parts that relate directly with the families and getting them connected with their kids. And Kevin, finally, I just want to ask you if you could have a message, you know, Canadians who are listening, some of the family members may be listening. If you had a message that you could deliver right now to all of them, what would it be? Well, you know, um, our, our premier of our province talked to me and he talked about uh, the fact that, you know, even the community of Humboldt, which is a small, close-knit family, um, we recognize that our province is a small, close-knit province and for that matter, so is our country and so is our world. And so um, I was grateful to hear his words because it really spoke to the importance of, of being together and um, and leaning and relying on each other through uh, through these very difficult times and uh, recognizing that that our kids and and uh, our adults who are impacted by trauma we need to reach out and support them in every possible way and uh, we know that that this trauma will extend far beyond um, Humboldt and uh, and it, uh, I mean, there are communities across our entire nation who are impacted by this. And so we need to, we need to do everything we possibly can to ensure that we're, 
we're, um, we're supporting each other, we're leaning on each other, and, and uh, ultimately doing, uh, you know, ensuring that uh, the, the, any pieces that we can provide um, are there for, for, uh, for each of us. And um, it's, a very, it's a very difficult and uh, probably the worst day in, in many of our lives. And um, we need to uh, go through our processes of grieving and, and also though recognize that we need to, to support each other through that process. That's Humboldt Broncos president, Kevin Geringer. Well, 29 people were on the team bus when it crashed last night. Tom Strash, Nitsky's son, was one of those passengers and he survived but is badly injured. He's alive and breathing, and from what we know, he has a broken back and, as of now, can't feel anything from his waist down. A friend of mine who's on Twitter, uh, I guess, phoned me and asked me if I heard, and I said I didn't, and then we just waited by the phone for calls, and then the Twitter universe started uh, exploding. And then one of Ryan's teammates' dads, our dad called me and said uh, he's with Ryan and Ryan is alive. Ryan's all about team and every guy on that team he loved, coaches he loved. And the first thing he said to me when I actually talked to him was, how are my teammates and coaches? And all I could say is, uh, I don't know, pal. We have a flight out at 11.30, um, and that was our friends. Uh, tried all morning to get us a flight out, and uh, then we got one. So me and uh, my wife, Michelle, will be heading out at 11.30 to go straight to Ryan to see him. And that was Tom Strashnitsky. His son, Ryan, was badly injured in the crash. Now, the world of arts and entertainment is also rallying around the Humboldt Broncos. They're expressing their condolences on social media. Yelena Azik is tracking the latest. Arthi, news of this nature has moved people, not just in our country, but stateside as well. You know, Will & Grace star Deborah Messing called it an unthinkable tragedy. And talk show host Ellen DeGeneres shared this post. She said, my heart breaks this morning for the entire Humboldt Broncos community. I'm sending so much love to everyone affected. And of course, Canadian cultural figures are sharing their thoughts. Toronto-born actor Will Arnett expressed that he's shocked and saddened by the loss in Saskatchewan thinking of all those in the humble Broncos family and everyone affected by this tragedy. Now, Calgary musician sisters Tegan and Sarah posted sending love to the humble Broncos and their friends and families. Our hearts are with you as you go through this unimaginable loss. Winnipeg-born singer-songwriter Chantal Kriviatsik said, I'm crying. This is every parent's worst nightmare. I will be in prayer and will also be regretting that what faith I feel helps in the sharing of these parents' grief cannot be accompanied by any words. It's a help Hopeless feeling. I wish there was something I could do. TV personality Jonathan Torrens referenced a kind offering from a woman in Saskatoon by saying, this is Canada in one tweet. Tears of sadness mixed with tears of pride. And that was in response to Rosemary Armstrong, who wrote, I am a hockey mom in Saskatoon. If you or family members need a place to stay or any other assistance, please contact me. That is something that we are seeing time and time again on social media. An outpouring of the support, not not just from words, but also concrete support in the form of uh, placement offering for free uh, locations and also money, as we now know that the GoFundMe campaign has broken the goal of $1 million. Arthi? Thanks for that, Yelena. Now, for continuing coverage of the Humboldt Broncos bus crash, you can either head to cbcnews.ca or tune in on CBC News Network. I'm Arthi Pohl. Thank you for watching.
we pray for those families and thinking about them. And I don't know what else to say, but. Uh, Emotional reaction from the coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs. He is one of many fighting back tears on this solemn day for Hockey Nation. 15 people are dead after a crash involving the Humboldt Broncos. At times like these, communities often come together. Today, members.